Do you find that everyone else that uses Adobe Illustrator seems to have this like magical flow, this like digital grace kind of float above the keyboard and be one with the mouse? And there's you, the digital caveman, hacking away at your anchor points with the wrong end of the pen tool. Why are you real strange? So if you are new to Illustrator and you are ready to level up, I've got seven tips here to add a little bit of Illustrator grace to your workflow. And if you hang around to the end, I'll give you a bonus class project. It's to make this impossible triangle and you can share it with me. These are some of the ones that my students have made recently. All right, my name is Dan Scott Yay! and that was a weird intro. But don't worry, I'm an Adobe certified instructor, course creator and chief caveman at bringyourownlaptop.com. And today let's learn these seven tips to mastering Illustrator, volume one. All right, tip one is the boss mode key. You can enable boss mode by holding down the option key on a Mac, alt key on a PC. It does all sorts of cool stuff. So I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool, which is clearly the M key, not clear. We know if we hold shift and drag out, we get a rectangle, easy, easy. If I undo that though, and hold shift and option, we go into boss mode where we can draw from the center. All right, it's not that fancy. It gets fancier, and you go back to your selection tool, okay, which is the V key, and you hold down the boss key, option on a Mac, alt on a PC, and you start dragging out, and it makes a duplicate. Look at us. Now boss mode is only enabled if somebody else is watching. It has to be a colleague or a client or your boss. Doesn't count if you're on your own. All right, it's tip number two. It's called do it again. Instead of dragging all these out, holding down the boss key, keep going and keep going. What you can do is drag one, okay, and then hit command D, control D on a PC. Look at that. This duplicates the last thing you did again. Select them, drag them down, command or control D, 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 and you get duplicates. Happy days. Now you can get to level two boss mode if you do it all without looking at your keyboard. If you have to look down and chase keys with your fingers, it kind of loses the effect. Now tip number three, make a boss mode. I'm making all these names up. Here's I'm gonna grab my line tool, which is the backslash key on the keyboard. I'm gonna draw out a line. Make sure it's nice and thick. I'm gonna hold shift while I click it to make it go up in big chunks. That's not the tip. The tip is instead of trying to duplicate this again using our command D, which is handy, it is blend mode. So I'm gonna hold down the option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC, and just drag one of them over here, select them both, then go up to object, and there's this one called blend, and go to make. And to start with, it kind of just blends them all together. Not quite what I want. Over here, there's blend options, and in here, instead of smooth, we can say specific steps. And we can say five. I'm gonna tab out. Look at that. 15. Look at us. We're awesome. I'm gonna click off, grab my white arrow, which is the A key, okay, the direct selection tool. Look at this. Ooh, hoo, hoo, fancy. To level up that tip even more, if you do it with a curve, I'm gonna use the curvature tool. If you haven't learned the curvature tool, you should go check it out. I've got a course. It's this one here. I cover all the best tools, plus tons of other things. There'll be a link for that in the description. There's an essentials and an advanced course. But for now, let's grab the curvature tool. Click once, click twice, maybe click again. I know, how easy to make curves. I'm gonna hit escape and grab the curvature tool again and draw another shape. Similar, but different. If you blend these two, I'm gonna change the color first, and the stroke size. But just like before, go to object, go to blend. We're going off the beaten path. This is not one of the tips, just a bonus tip. Blending just like we did before, we go to blend options, the same as before, go to specific steps, and let's put in, I don't know, five, I'm gonna tab down. <gasps> Look, ooh, blends them together. Anybody tried to do that with the pen tool, trying to follow other curves? Oh, it's tricky. So going off track here now. Let's click on the stroke, <laughs> pick a different profile, because that one didn't look very good. Make it bigger. Look at us, blending goodness. Anyway, forget where we're at, we're at tip number four, I think. So tip number four happens when I've got the line tool and I've drawn a line. This happens to all people all the time. It doesn't matter how advanced you are. You draw something you're like, excellent, got my line and then, huh, oh, it's got no stroke, no fill. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, with it selected though, there is a sweet shortcut where you can say, actually, I wonder if it could just add the defaults, like add a default color to it. Just hit the D key. Look at that, it's given it a black stroke and a white fill. I'm gonna make mine thicker again, holding shift and clicking the up arrow, get a nice thick line. Now the next tip, tip five, flows on from this one because actually I want the white to be on the stroke. Well, you do this, right? You're like, okay, I'm gonna open the color panel, which is a bonus tip. It's the greater than key on your keyboard. It's this one down here, look. That just jumps open the color panel. You're like, oh, that in itself is magic. And you're like, okay, cool. So I'm gonna mess around with this. And you're like, okay, you spend ages like crafting the right color. I like to use the HSB color scheme. Okay, hue, saturation, brightness. But you're like, oh, okay, you spend ages you're like, oh, perfect. Got myself some purple. And you're like, ah, oh, it's 
Play to the stroke. <laughs> Rats. Then you're going to do some magic of copying and pasting the codes around and remembering the RGB. No, you're not, because you get a sweet new shortcut. It is Shift X, both on Mac and PC. Look what's going to happen. Purple's in the fill, black's in the stroke, but if I hit Shift X, boom, toggles them. Shift X, 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 just toggles them back and forth. Is that all the time? Because I do it wrong all the time. Now, I'm forgetting which tip we're up to. I think it's tip six, and it's kind of in the same vein. We're kind of grouping them together. Let's switch to the circle tool, which is clearly the L key, not clear. If you're like, hey, I wish you'd write those shortcuts down. Oh, guess what? I've got a shortcut sheet. You can download it and print it off for free. There'll be a link in the description. Okay, I'm gonna draw a circle around this here. Remember our boss key, hold down the option key on a Mac, alt key on a PC and shift. Okay, and it drags from the center, which is handy. And you're like, that's cool. What you really want is you do not want a fill. You want the stroke, but no fill. Ah, there's a shortcut. Okay, and it's the forward slash key. Down your keyboard of this one here. And it gets rid of the fill. Actually, it gets rid of whatever is active over here. So I'm gonna undo. Let's scoot over so we can see it nice and close. So the X key on the keyboard, we did Shift X before, right? Shift X, which switched the fill and the stroke. That's cool. But the X key just decides who's active. Is the fill active or the stroke active? And that is really handy when you combine it with the forward slash because you're like, all right, I want no stroke. So I hit X, so it's in front. Okay, there he is. And then hit the forward slash, bam, no stroke. If I click on this and I want the stroke but no fill, I just make sure, hit X again. Okay, you can see this bit, the fill's at the front and then hit the forward slash. Decide who's active, who's at the front, and then hit the forward slash and gets rid of it. Now, not to be counted in the seven steps, but a little bonus on that one is, okay, greater than, less than, and this forward slash, these are all handy. For this first one here, the greater than, if I select on something and hit that, it opens up the color panel, super handy. And if I hit the forward slash, it gets rid of the fill or the stroke, depending on what's active. The one in the middle, what does this guy do? Let's click him. It applies a gradient, and it applies whatever the last gradient you were messing around with. That's what I was doing. With this one, the less than, less than, less than. Oh, yours are probably gonna just be black and white, but it's super handy, way more handier than doing this. If I do this, go over here to fill. You're always on the wrong one. You're like, I go over here to swatches, and you're like, oh, where are you? You're at the front. Oh, there it is. Default black and white gradient. That's the long way. While we're here, anybody wonder why these two are in here? Like, <laughs> when is that like, oh, you know what I need? I need an orchard gradient going into transparency. Phew, it's a shortcut, lovely. Don't get me started on the pattern swatches. What the heck are these doing in here? Let's get on to the finale, the last, and my most favorite of all hacks in Illustrator. All right, it's time for tip number seven. My favorite tool, I call it the scissor tool sucks. It's actually called the shape builder tool. Sorry, scissor tool, but it's so much better. Let's tidy up the desktop, we'll just move over here. <laughs> Let's move to the side. Anybody do this? Start designing in the pasteboard. Way easier than actually cleaning up. I'm gonna close these down. And we're gonna draw stuff using our skills. Okay, we're gonna use the backslash for the line tool. I'm gonna to hit D for my default so I don't end up with this pattern swatch in there. So D for defaults. Actually, I don't even want a fill. So I'm gonna hit the forward slash. I'm gonna hold shift, drag out a line, or shift an option and drag out a line from the center. Ooh, combos. I'll zoom in. Okay, I'm gonna grab my black arrow, hold down the option key again, drag it up to get one of them, hit Command D or Control D on a PC to get two of them. I'm gonna draw that impossible triangle that you saw at the beginning. Again, holding option or Alt on a PC to get a duplicate. I'm gonna rotate mine by, I don't know, what is one 360? I don't know, I should know. 360 divided by three. Oh yeah, bonus on top of your bonus. You can do math in these things. 120, of course it is. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna have you there. I'm gonna drag another one. I'm gonna flip it. Boom. And now I'm gonna show you why the scissor tool sucks. Select them all, then we're gonna go to this one here called Shape Builder. I love this tool. Okay, and I'm gonna hold down the option key on a Mac. You can see it changes to a minus, and then I'm just gonna go scrub a dub dub, scrub, 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 scrub. <laughs> <laughs> cool, eh? You can click on once if you like, if you're a clicker. And there you go. Oh, and that's why the scissor tool sucks. Sorry, scissor tool. The other thing the scissor tool can't do, let's go back to that same shape builder tool, Shift M, on both Mac and PC, is it can combine stuff as well. Watch this. I can click, hold, and drag across these ones to join those three up. Oh, it's a whole shape. And to get that impossible triangle thing, you kind of go down one and across this way. A bit of a brain teaser. I want all these to join up. And then I want to go this way and then cut in. Join these ones up and then this and cut it in their way. Oh, look what we did. 
Let's double down on some of those shortcuts. V for the V key, I'm gonna click on just one chunk and look, they're all separated. I'm gonna hit the less than key to add a gradient, maybe G. So I can see the colors on here. I'm gonna double click both ends. I've already got some colors already pre-made. Here we go. And drag them out. Back to the V key, click on the next chunk. Hit the less than key, Put this one here, the less than key. I have to play around with the gradients in their direction. This one, I'm just selecting on them, hitting the G key and just dragging them in a direction. And we get our kind of like impossible-ish looking rectangle. I'm gonna get rid of the strokes. Who remembers, hands up. That's okay, we're just learning. Remember, if I hit forward slash at the moment, it's gonna get rid of whatever the top is over here. So I hit X to make sure strokes at the front, then hit forward slash, and then we've got no stroke. Oh, we're doing it. Geniuses. Go on. You mess with this one a little bit, I think. Yeah, there we go. There you go, we made an impossible triangle, plus some sweet tips. Now this is gonna be volume one. There's enough people in the comments saying that they want a volume two with less dad jokes. Guess what, volume two will come with less dad jokes. All right, we made an impossible triangle and we learned seven tips for a bit of Illustrator Zen. And now bonus time, it is class project time, not homework time. Uh, I would like you to create your very own impossible triangle. Okay, you get bonus points if you use a gradient. And then I want you to share it with me on any of these social media uh, places. I use the hashtag BYOL triangle. Okay, that way that I can find it and have a look. And also that you can do a search and see what other people have made as well. Uh, the big thing though is that it is not a beauty pageant. This is practice. So share whatever you make, good, bad or otherwise. Okay, I'd love to see what you make. Now we're at the end. But if you don't want the end to ride, ride to end? If you don't want the ride to end, you can come join me for my Illustrator Essentials or Illustrator Advanced course, link in the description. Now I was thinking about making this a series as volume one. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see a volume two and if you want less dad jokes or more dad jokes. What's that? No one wants more dad jokes? Now, do you think they saw this cleverly hidden throughout the video? Not clever.